Exactly. And it, it feeds into the politics of resentment, where you blame others for your own misfortune. And of course, there are many groups that you can find to blame. So foreigners might only be the very first group, but once this has been established as an approach and as a mental model, it would be easy to extend that same approach, for example, to class or to race. South Africa is experiencing a rise in xenophobic populism by various political parties. What is driving this? Well, joining me to discuss is John Endritz, director of the CRA and the co-author of our weekly risk alert, which goes out exclusively to clients of the CRA every Monday morning. So John, in the risk alert, you flagged this potential problem of this increased hostile rhetoric towards immigrants and foreigners in South Africa. What do you think is behind this? Yeah, so I think this is a new development in, in South Africa. Um, in the past, there have been political parties that have given a little bit of attention to anti-foreigner sentiment. Um, I think COPE had its moment, um, and then uh, Action SA, I think, has built a reputation on this. But what we've picked up, especially since the beginning of the year, is that Action SA is not owning that space all by itself anymore but rather that a whole raft of other parties has jumped onto that bandwagon, including the EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters, who went around checking work permits and foreigners working at restaurants in a publicity stunt in January. But then also the Patriotic Alliance that copied that stunt uh, more recently, the Encarta Freedom Party that was going to release a policy on the uh, rules governing the employment of foreigners in South Africa. And so you've got all these parties hopping onto this bandwagon and trying to make some political hay out of the issue of foreigners in South Africa. And most recently, I think, and probably also most concerning, is that the ANC itself has now also tried to latch onto that trend. All right. So, John, the the party is expressing some of this anti-immigrant sentiment, but how is this translating into policy? Are we seeing any any changes there in terms of the way in which uh, government policy is implemented? So I think what we're seeing is that the ANC is acting as if it's taking quite a measured and rational approach to this issue. Um, But I do think that you need to look beyond the rhetoric and spot what underlies it. And I think that the ANC is at the moment also thinking that maybe it can shore up its electoral fortunes by jumping onto this bandwagon. And some of the things that we are seeing are the Zimbabwean exemption permits, which is a special visa category that allowed Zimbabweans to stay in South Africa and work in South Africa since 2009, now being scheduled for termination. So that program is to come to an end. It was meant to end end of 2021, but was extended at the very last minute to the end of 2022. But what it means is that the up to 200,000 Zimbabweans living in South Africa under this permit will now need to find a different visa category to stay on or leave the country by the end of the year, which I'm sure is creating quite a lot of um, stress. Because imagine you've been in South Africa for over a decade on this work permit. You know, you've built a life here. You might own a house here. You might have family here by now. You've had a job. And now you will uh, might have to leave everything behind and go back to Zimbabwe, which is still in a terrible shape, of course. Um, and another policy shift that we saw recently was this idea of sectoral quotas for foreigners, um, recently mooted um, by the Home Affairs Ministry, that proposes that certain industry sectors in South Africa should be reserved exclusively for South Africans. So not a single foreigner must work in these sectors. And that other sectors should have quotas where you would say, foreigners are permissible or 10% or whatever the number might be, which I really think is an appalling um, policy initiative, um, a very bad idea. And I do hope that the government assists from pursuing this. Yeah, these are essentially palliative measures, uh, blaming groups of people, foreigners, uh, for your own policy failings. Uh, Our record high unemployment as a consequence of the lockdown, as well as our rigid labor regulatory framework. Uh, This is why people don't have jobs uh, and many immigrants are exempt from those laws. They operate underneath the, the radar um, and they are willing to work perhaps below minimum wages, for example, and they don't have necessarily the guarantee of that safety net. So, uh, so all they have is, is their own uh, pluck, their ability to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. I mean, it's amazing what many uh, foreigners achieve in this country, despite uh, pretty hostile conditions. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think you, you, you quite rightly put your finger on the problem, which is that this um, targeting of foreigners really is a distraction. 
It is a diversion um, of attention from the problems that really plague the country, which are related to governance failures and vast corruption. And um, it's, of course, a very convenient scapegoat for the government because you can always point to some group and make it responsible for the problems that you've got. In this case, foreigners, um, they can't really defend themselves very easily. Um, so in a weak position, and therefore you can quite easily target them and scape the, scapegoat them. Yeah, and of course, uh, the ability for South Africa to maintain the integrity of its border is very weak. Uh, we've seen uh, that border posts uh, are, are very permeable, uh, you know, fences are broken, et cetera. Uh, so in addition to the desire that many immigrants have, there's also this incapacity for uh, the state to basically protect the, uh, the sovereignty of its borders. Exactly. And I think, you know, that's across so many areas, um, even including to, to crime and policing. You know, in, in some of the rhetoric that we're seeing from these parties, uh, we hear that foreigners are responsible for crime. And mention might be made of Nigerians in the drug trade or Zimbabweans involved in cash and transit heists, et cetera, et cetera. But really, the problem is that uh, law enforcement in general is so weak. And ultimately, what the state should be doing is pursuing crime no matter who commits it, whether it be a foreigner or a local the consequence should be the same. There should be an investigation, there should be an arrest, there should be a prosecution and a conviction of guilty. Um, and that should be applied indistinctly um, as, to, as to the origin of the person in, in question. And that is not what's not happening. And that, that leaves open these gaps for foreigners to be scapegoated and tarred with the brush of being responsible for crime. Okay, but now what are some of the long run risks that we could see emerging if this xenophobic populism gathers momentum? Could we see a rise, for example, in attacks against foreigners like we've seen in the recent past? Yes, I think we absolutely could. Um, in 2008, South Africa had some quite severe um, pogroms, a targeting of foreigners in which over 60 people were killed. Over 100,000 were displaced. And I think that the conditions for that to be repeated are still present in South Africa. If anything, they are even more favorable to that kind of incident from occurring because unemployment is even higher um, real incomes have been stagnant for a decade. And now for this tinderbox to have the government throwing sparks into this tinderbox, I think is extremely irresponsible and dangerous because it really can lead to a uh, conflagration and quite uh, severe incidents of violence. Okay, so there's potential risks facing the immigrants themselves, but also if we establish a pattern of hostility towards certain groups, that could very easily be used to target specific racial groups, or ethnicities in South Africa. So I think there's a, a severe risk there as well that a, a pattern of scapegoating emerges. Exactly. And it, it feeds into the politics of resentment where you blame others for your own misfortune. And of course, there are many groups that you can find to blame. So foreigners might only be the very first group, but once this has been established as an approach and as a mental model, it would be easy to extend that same approach, for example, to class or to race um, or to religion or ethnicity or tribal allegiance or whatever kind of uh, mechanism you want to use to divide society into different groups. Um, and then it becomes very easy for this, this idea to be transferred and for other groups to be targeted in the same way that foreigners are being targeted at the moment. John Andrews, thank you very much. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What do you think is behind this increased rhetoric against foreigners? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, a quick reminder that if you would like to gain access to all of the CRA's reports, including our weekly risk alert, you can sign up for our 30-day free trial. There's a link in the description below. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.